going to react to the full bit in context, give you guys my unadulterated thoughts. I have not seen K-Dub's full video. I only saw the clips he did for Twitter. People said that that was not uh, a fair shake for Mike Todd because there was other stuff there that was left out of the Twitter version that K-Dub put up. And there was obviously a lot of outrage about that. So we're going to look at it in all its glory and context so we don't miss anything. Now, I am not reacting to an hour and 48-minute sermon. I'm sorry. But they told me to pick this up at about the 45-minute mark. Is Mike Todd getting falsely dragged? Or people who are critical have a right to be critical. And as he say some, uh, some wild stuff, we're going to look at all of it here in just a second. Let's, uh, let's jump in. How do you know you're serving the king? It's usually the opposite of what you naturally want to do. I'm trying to give you, I serve the king. No, you do what you want to do. You, you value your opinion of it. I mean, that's a gem. You got to give it to him. He said, serving guys is usually the opposite of what you want to do. I would say, yeah. I would say also over time, I think God changes our desires and we start wanting to desire the things that God has for us. But I think initially, yes, yeah, usually the opposite, right? More than you value God's, <laughs> not just opinion, his decision on it. God's already decided some stuff that we think we have, can have an opinion on. Okay. God decided male and female. So the critique was that on the Twitter version that Kada put out, this part was left out. No, no, no. I'm not. This is not a bad. I need y'all to hear my heart on this. This is not a bashing. This is not. A, he if I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a, like a little maybe if somebody, well, I was born like this. I don't know how I feel. That I, I feel you. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. In culture, you can make up whatever you want to. In culture, you can build whatever you want to. But it's the truth of the matter is that if we are going to submit under what the king says, I'm going to have to wrestle with what I don't even fully understand. Okay, so he's saying, what, what I think he's attempting to say is, I think he's attempting to echo 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where it says, you know, let the world do what the world's going to do. You judge those within the church. He's using kingdom in, in church probably interchangeably, the body of Christ, the kingdom, kingdom on earth, yada, yada, yada. So what I think he's saying is like, look, the, those in the king, the, those in culture can have all kinds of, uh, genders, right? They could have all kinds of genders, but those in the church and the kingdom have to submit to the king. That's a that's a that's a solid take, okay. Um, but the message of the gospel is that all men should repent and follow God's way, right? So there's a there's a there's a tension there because when people are left alone to their own devices, they don't just self-identify as non-binary or whatever, they then want to be activists and indoctrinate your kids and make sure there's policy in public schools, which is what a lot of people are pushing back against. It's not the people that are struggling who are confused. It's the, it's the overflow of this into the activism that then impacts policy and education, which then becomes indoctrination. So it's tough. And this is why a lot of us don't send our kids to public school. But everybody doesn't have that luxury. But I'm sure you guys have friends that send their kids to public school because maybe they both have to work or whatever. And, you know, so-and-so knows someone that's trans. So-and-so. I mean, like eight or nine. I got a buddy that's like, his, his, my son and his son are friends. And this is eight or nine years old. Trans. Dad is trans. This and that. So this stuff isn't happening in a vacuum. So I think it's tough to just like ah, take a libertarian approach and be like, well, I just let people do what they want to do. But in the kingdom, this is how it is. I would say, yeah, but we also should be advocating for people to follow the king, right? So I, 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 I get it. I get it. Oh God, pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I know, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. But he did make it simpler. That's this, the, and this is where, this is the, the goofiness. He did make it simpler. He did make it simpler. There's a social contagion going on. <clears throat> you guys seen this? Traditionalists, 1% identified as a part of the LG TV community. Baby boomers, 2.6%. Gen X, 
4.2%. Millennials, my generation, 10.5%. Gen Z, 20%. One out of five now identify as a part of the LGTV community. One out of, one out of five Gen Zers. At the, and this is the Bill Maher joke. At this rate, by the year, you know, by the year 21, 90% of the population is going to identify. If we keep doubling every generation, so so there is a there's a tension there. That is, it is simple. God, the, the truth is usually simple. But that that ain't normal. That's a social contagion. That's a social contagion. That's that's not. I was born really, really. It went from one percent to two and a half percent to four and a half percent to ten percent to twenty percent. No, I'm sick. And it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. I said it's, it's A or B. No, I'm serious. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay? I don't know. But I do know in the kingdom. Now it was this. I think this was left out, right? But I do. So he said, "If you ask me, what do I think about this? I don't know, but I do know that in the kingdom, in, you know, in, in the, the kingdom, kingdom. you got to submit. They gonna cast me. In the, I'm not the king. I don't. I don't know why he decided to do it like this. I don't know why you're wrestling like that, and I don't know what to do to help you, but to stand with you." And pray with you and not and you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title. Transformation, you can be here. I mean, listen. We looked at it in context, ladies and gentlemen. That that part is an L. Now let, let, let's 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 give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say he's trying to be funny. Let's just say this is hyperbole. The the the, the tension there is as a pastor. We do know. We could talk about natural law. We do know. We could talk about basic bodily autonomy and what goes where. We do know. Biology. We do know that there's certain body parts that shouldn't go into other body parts because that's not how good the good Lord designed them. And that's not what leads to life. We do know. We do know. We just don't, we just don't want to be honest about it. We just don't want to be honest about it. We don't want to look at the rates of domestic attacks within that community versus heterosexual community. We don't want to look at the rates, the rates of STDs in that community versus the heterosexual community. We don't want to look at that stuff. Science don't want to talk about that. Science doesn't want to talk about that stuff. Science doesn't want to, the biology don't want to talk about. What, what are you doing when you, you're putting that thing into an anal cavity, which is designed to extract poop? What are we talking about? We do know. it's a, The natural law is written on men's heart. Now, we don't know why certain people may have to carry that cross. And their burden might be different. I'm with you. We, we don't know that part. I understand. I don't, I got, listen, I got friends. I got folks I've been, you know, mentoring that, that deal with this stuff. I don't know. That I don't know. I don't know why some people have that. I don't know. I don't know. That I don't know. But to say, I don't, we don't, I don't know. Um, so that's the part of like, what is he trying to say? Because I do think we do know. And maybe he just isn't hip to the the practical side of all of this. The what, what the what the life expectancy is. Right? But we know. We know. Oh, God. You want your love here? I want you here. Will I marry you? I, I can't, not because I don't think you found love. Just as a kingdom ambassador, when I look back at the orders that are in the constitution of the kingdom. I mean, listen, that's, that's again, he says he's not going to perform on those marriages. So that's a, that's a W. But, he, but, but he's clear. And, and again, this is the part where we, you, you, we have to properly assess what he is saying and what he is not saying because he is not co-signing this he is not co-signing this as something that he's behind he's in favor for he would do 
Now, the real love part is also a little questionable because, you know, yes, people can 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 feel stuff, but that's not what love is, right? So it's a conflicting message at best. It's a conflicting message at best. And this is in context. This is given him a process that he just said he's not going to perform that kind of wedding. Respect. Respect. That's better than Andy Stanley. Right? I know people don't talk like this because they want it to be black and white, but there's some things on this earth I don't have the answers to. And so when I don't know, I just default. That's solid. I come sub to the mission. It's solid. He's saying, I don't know why some people feel this way and, and, and desire these things. And so I'm going to submit to what the king says and what the kingdom is about. That, that, I mean, that, he's, he's solid there. I know people are going to try to make this clickbait and make it something I didn't say. I hope you hear the heart of what I'm saying. I, I wrestle and pray for all type of people all the time. How freaking unfair it must feel to feel something every day of your life and it not line up with the God you love. I don't have all the answers. My wife used to work in the, in the makeup community. There's I mean, it, you know, he's, 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 he's taking a stand. He's attempting to really kind of tiptoe around it, but he's, he's taking a stand. He's saying what it is. Tons of people who have different identity um, associations in that community. And one of her favorite people in there was a homosexual male, the sweetest guy in the world. I mean, had the love that most Christians don't have. Would do anything for people. I'm off on a tangent right now, but my heart is aching right now. Because the truth of the matter is, he wants a close relationship with God. I don't, I don't know about that part. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Um, this is, again, pragmatism. Because someone seems to represent attributes that resemble the fruit of the Spirit, therefore, they uh, love God. I, I don't see that as a correlation. Here's why. Jesus, in Matthew 7, let's, let, matter of fact, let's pull the verse up. If your son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, if you then, though you are evil, who's you, humans? If he asks you for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law of the prophets. See, Jesus is saying people who are evil can do good things. <gasps> Some of y'all got this goofy theology that only Christians could do good things. No, that's nonsense. People that are evil, we are wicked, are, 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 there's none righteous, none not one, per Romans. People who are evil can do good things. So just because you meet someone and they're such a swell, jolly guy, they're so kind, they're so sweet, they just want more of the Lord. No. People who are evil can do good things. So it doesn't matter how nice they are, how kind they are, how uh, polite they are, how sweet they are, how right? I mean, we know we know folks of other religions that are like this. We know folks of other um, lifestyles that are like this. We know folks all over that 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 are sweet. Just because they're exhibiting something that resembles the fruit of the spirit, that doesn't mean that they're filled with the spirit or that they're desiring God, right? That 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 that's that's not, that's not those those aren't one and the same. People are wicked and they also have eternity written on their hearts as the scriptures say we're, we're very flawed broken people and so this idea like oh this person loves god because they're nice and they they're more loving than christians it's spirit and truth right you don't you don't pick one or the other it's both it's how we're standing on the truth and also, we're exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. You could have counterfeit fruit, but that doesn't mean that's coming from the Spirit of truth. So, you know, I, I, I don't really know about that part, but let, 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 let's keep going. And again, I'm, I'm just trying to give this brother a fair shake. That's it. That's my only heart. I just, 
because because this was back and forth and the, the K Dub with Twitter clip and. I'm giving him a fair shake, watching it in context, and just giving you guys my honest assessment. It's not as wild as it initially seemed, but it is a little off. But all of the walls, all of the judgment, all of the things have kept him away. And what I'm saying to I don't, you know, yes, sometimes, sometimes, this is true, but, it, but people also are kept away because they're evil. <laughs> I, if me and my home are trying to live a life where we're submitted to eating in a way that doesn't make us obese and fat like the rest of 70% of Americans and we're serving greens and chicken and broccoli at every meal and you don't come over yeah maybe it's because you know we're lean and fit in shape and it, it could come off a bit intense and maybe you feel judged because we're going to tell you the truth about your obesity yeah but you also don't want to come over and eat chicken and broccoli keep it a buck fam stop it you also don't want to come over and have chicken and broccoli for dinner you, you want to eat McDonald's and fast food and junk. Keep it a buck. I'm, I'm preaching to some of y'all right now. And so there is a way to present a standard that is optimal while being compassionate and kind. But we, all, we can't always default to, well, they just feel judged. And listen, man, some of you should feel judged for the decisions you've made with your life. Because trust me, God's going to judge you. And it's going to be way worse. Than human judgment. Let's get back to this. To everybody in this room is, you don't have to have an answer to stand with somebody. Oh my God, y'all are so religious today. I, what does that mean? You don't have to have an answer to stand with somebody. What does that? What are you talking about? To stand with somebody. What does that mean? To stand with the activist that wants our kids to be taught that uh, their marriage is the same as my marriage. What does that mean? To stand with someone that wants four wives and wants uh, to, to, to have a, 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 a group of sister wives? What does that mean? What does that mean, stand with somebody? They want polygamy legal because, well, I mean, that that's in the scripture somewhere. So they want polygamy. So what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to fight for them? Are we supposed to stand with them? Are we supposed to go to their rallies? Are we supposed to affirm them? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean, stand with someone? What are we talking about? It's all fun and games till it shows up in your house. <laughs> Until you dealing with it in your home, now they just need to throw them away and cast into a lake. Of, what? That's God's workmanship and a masterpiece. I'm offending religious spirits right now. I already know it. What I'm saying is, who's going to serve? Who's going to serve the, the untouchable? Who's going to serve the ones that the church is outcasted? The church already serves those folks in soup kitchens and homeless shelters and, pro and programs. What are we talking about? The church already serves these, these folks. They just don't want to go the extra mile and affirm them in all of it. That's the, I think that's... The, and, and, and maybe it doesn't sound like he's saying it should be affirmed, to be fair to him. But what is he... You know, and this is... It's not about being religious. It's just it's just confusing. Like you're confusing, my guy. It's confusing. What does it mean to stand with somebody? What are you saying? What are you saying? What does that mean? You want them to, to have the right to get married, to have their rights to stand? What is it? What are you talk? What are we talking about? I won't perform one of these marriages, but I think they should be allowed to. And if I was invited to one, I wouldn't marry them, but I would show up and support them and stand with them. What are we talking about? Who's going to serve the people who your parents taught you to hate? Some of y'all, your parents would turn over in your grave if you knew you was in a church with a black teacher in a black suit with a black man on a shirt wearing braids. Because they, they taught you. But in the kingdom, we serve everybody. Let me just put it in a point. Serving the kingdom is going to cost you your natural response. Whatever you would naturally do 
in the kingdom, you're going to have to do the opposite. I'm trying That's to give dope. you the key to actually serving. When I want to take over and be a tyrant and lead in tyranny, I lead in humility. Mm. It's what our example Jesus did. C can I prove it to you? Oh, I love the Bible. <sighs> Matthew 20, 28. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to do what? Amen. Serve others. And then he took it another step, not just serve them, die for them. Come on. Kill something in himself for them and give his life as a ransom for many. What are you trying to say? Write this point down. Serving the kingdom is going to require a sacrifice. Do you know how many things I'd like to do that I can't because I serve the king? I know most people won't tell you that, but I wish... I wish sometimes that I could just put on a mask and not be me for a second and do everything I felt to do in whatever way I felt to do it. I don't have that luxury. Cause what, are you, what is he talking about? You guys think I'm stupid. I'm not stupid, guys. I, I know this. Sh what, is he, what is he talking about? This is This is spooky. We're no longer slaves to sin. We're slaves, we're slaves to God. What are we talking about? I serve the king. Oh, you thought I was going to say because I'm a pastor. Or I have a platform. Or people would know. No, 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 no. The reason I do the right thing is because I've decided to pledge my allegiance. Not to a king. But the Bible calls him the king of king, the Lord of Lord. So if I never was on this stage, but I decided to live and be a kingdom ambassador, my response should be the same if I was on the platform under all these lights. Okay. You have no excuse because of your elevation. Okay. Oh, Yo. oh, oh we sent his shots of verdict? We sent his shots of verdict? We sent a shots at verdict. You got no excuse. The other guy with the big church. Your elevation. You got no excuse. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, 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 I'm totally messing. Your elevation does not give you an excuse. Oh! I'm going to have to close this because I can see some of y'all <laughs> mouth becoming white. Y'all get ashy around the mouth. This is too much. <laughs> My natural response. Because the truth of the matter is we... We want to serve from a place of insecurity, our own selfish desire. But when you serve the kingdom, you have to sacrifice all that. It's not that you don't have it. You just can't act on it. Okay. Serving the kingdom is going to cost you your natural response. Man. Man. My wife made me mad. So I want to go talk to the girl at my job. Okay. I'm going to be charitable here. I think this is the second the second part. I'm I'm going to assume that this is him attempting to relate to people in his pews and this isn't how he really feels. I that I'm just going to extend that benefit of the doubt. My natural response is you treat me like that, I'm going to go do something that makes me feel better. In the kingdom, you have to put that response it's okay to feel it. Nobody has ever gotten in trouble for feeling it. Jesus kind of did the whole, like, if you lust after a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery. I'm okay for you to feel horny. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't feel horny for someone that's not your wife, bud. Again, I don't know if that's what he's saying, but no, you can't do that. You cannot burn with lust for someone that's not your spouse. That's not okay. That's not okay. And again, I'm just confused on what he's saying. Like, what do you? What is he getting at? Oh my God! Want to cheat on your wife? Want to cheat on your? I didn't catch this the first time. Isn't the whole point of being born again is that we don't remain slaves to sin, we become slaves to the king, and then therefore 
our desires, our hearts change. I don't, I don't want to cheat on my wife. I don't. I don't want, I don't have those feelings. I would hope that neither does Mike Todd. But what are we ta- what is he saying right now? I don't want to cheat on your husband. Feel like leaving them nappy-headed kids to f- No! No, 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 no. Because then it creates a fixation on things you shouldn't be thinking about and feeling. Make they, I'm moving the whole wide. Feel it? Look up flights. $600. I'll be out of here tomorrow. I will be out of here. No. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. When you have a thought like that, take it captive. Sue the king, under the king. Don't do that. Don't start looking up flights and fantasizing about what life would be like if you were single again and how you'd have to die to yourself because you have kids and you can't pursue your own thing anymore. And you can't live for yourself. Don't do that. That's, 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 that's childish. That's clown behavior. That's immaturity. Don't do that. Take every thought captive. Pray without ceasing. Go to bed earlier. Move around. Put your sin to death or it will put you to death. Don't do that. That's a recipe for a train wreck of a life. All of these things start with a thought that then turns into a desire, that then turns into a fixation, that then evolves. And then before you know it, what are you doing? Everybody say, feel it. God wouldn't have given you feelings. No. If he didn't expect you to feel it. No. But in the kingdom, we have to put our feelings through a filter. Yes. Yes. That part and is we put true. we our feelings through a filter. This is how we serve the king. We do not act on everything that we Okay. Feel. This is good. Yes. Okay. He tried to clean that up. Okay. I'm glad that he said don't follow your feelings. That's good. That's a W. Okay. That's a W. The flip side is that not all your feelings are valid. Now, all your feelings are good and that it's not okay to fixate on negative feelings and, and dark things. Your feelings aren't just natural things. Sometimes your feelings are warning signals. My therapist, we put together a whole Master My uh, Habits course with my Christian therapist, Dr. Rudy. You guys should go check it out at mastermyhabits.com. Okay, so we can fi- help you figure out how to master these, these habits, these feelings that you have. And how he describes it, a licensed Christian therapist, not a counselor, not a pastor who does this on the side, a licensed Christian therapist, okay, with 40 years of experience. Your feelings are messengers. Your feelings are messengers. But that doesn't mean they're always true. Certain messengers are you trying to tell you trying to tell you something when you are walking on a hike and you see a snake and you get afraid that's a it's a proper message that that snake can attack you okay but sometimes those feelings are not accurate for example my wife has a phobia of animals if you were anywhere around and there's a dog that's not on the leash she will jump up and lose it Okay, she was, I've seen her jump on dining room tables before. I've seen her jump on cars. I've seen her jump on couches. She freaks out. That is not that is not a normal thing. <laughs> is she she's feeling something that's not normal? Okay, so when you're feeling things that are not um that that, that, that are not congruent, it's telling you something, but that's not telling you that it's good. Okay, so if you feel anxiety. You don't need to always go take a pill for it. If you feel anxiety, your body is sending messengers to say, hey, something's not right with your life. You got to fix it. Let's fix it. Let's figure out what's going on here and why. Go outside. Get some vitamin D. Go on a walk. Go to sleep earlier. Eat some better food. Go have that awkward conversation you've been avoiding. Your feelings are messengers to the thing that's underneath. And so the, it's like he's he's saying don't follow your feelings. Amen. Yes and amen. But then the flip side is he's saying it's okay to feel everything you feel. No, it's not okay to feel certain things. It's not okay to feel it because because oftentimes you'll fixate on certain things. And there's certain things that by the grace of God, I, I don't feel anymore. It's not, it's not, it's, it's a difference between like, oh, that woman is attractive. She's attractive. Wow. 
a man's going to see a woman, he's going to find her attractive. It's a whole other thing to, to, to marinate on that and, and fixate on that and start thinking that the, the things you could do with that person. Right? The, that, that, the first one is like, we're going to naturally react to someone that's attractive. The second part is, ah, I want, I want this person in this way. That's lust. Don't feel that way. Fix that too. Fix that too. Remember when Jesus came? They wanted a king on a stallion. They got a carpenter on a dark donkey. You know, and so, and this is where I would agree with him. And I would just, ask, because in the upside down kingdom, it's not about status and it's not about fame and it's not about notoriety. It's about the first being last and the last being first. It's about the person who's the greatest is the one that could serve everyone. And so I hope he's driving it there that in a upside down kingdom, which is the kingdom of God, it's, it's actually not about what you can get from God and what you can uh, build for yourself and for your name and for your influence. It's actually the opposite is how much you can serve others. And by serving others, you actually get to be great in God's eyes. Right. And you see that Jesus, when they were the apostles, the disciples were arguing, the disciples, they weren't apostles, they were arguing with themselves. Who's the greatest in the kingdom? Who's the greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus said, she who is like one of these children. And then they did it again. They kept arguing about this. He doesn't rebuke them. He redirects them. He redirects their desire to be great, to say, it's actually about your service for people. That is where your greatness comes from. And so he's he's right about that, but I'm not sure if he's, he's where he's going to go all the way with that. And so anyway, having watched this, um, I'm, I'm glad I saw the whole clip. Uh, I, I, I think some of the feeling stuff is honestly alarming. Some of the, I don't know... Is, is, is a bit sus. Um, uh, I'm glad he said he wouldn't perform a wedding like that. My question would is, would he attend? It's not complicated. It's simple. There's A and B. There's male and female. God designed male and female for marriage. Does not. I don't need to not know or whatever. Now, what I would agree with is people have complicated desires. So there's one part I agree with him, but the rest of it, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. No, you do know. And if you're saying you don't know, you're being, dis you're being disingenuous or you're just ignorant. Okay, two, uh, your feelings are not true. He said, don't follow your feelings. I agree with, I would take it further. I would say, conform your feelings into God's desire. He said, I have no problem with you feeling like cheating on your spouse. That's what he said. Rewind the stream. He said that. I said, you should not feel like cheating on your spouse. There's a, a, a lifetime of difference. There's this huge chasm between what Mike Todd is saying and what I'm saying. I don't have a bunch of things I secretly desire to do that I can't do because of the kingdom. No, the kingdom has conformed my desires into the desires of the king. And the parts that aren't fully conformed yet, they're getting submitted and refined over time. Huge chasm of difference. Massive difference. So I didn't regurgitate what he said. I disagreed with him there because he's out of pocket for saying that. It is problematic for you to desire to leave your spouse. It is problematic for you to desire to cheat on someone. It is problematic for you to desire to do wild things when you meet with people that you don't know because they're attractive. That is out of pocket. Those are not normal feelings and desires. And by I say normal, I don't mean common because there's a lot of things that are common that aren't normal. Just because something is common, just because everyone cheats, everyone cheats, doesn't mean that it's normal. That's not how God designed it. Just because everyone's broke doesn't mean that's how God designed it. Just because everyone's overweight, that's not how God designed it. There's a lot of things that are common that aren't normal. So because people are, 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 are common in cheating and desiring to sleep with random people, that's not the way the Lord made it. That is out of pocket. So we don't agree. I could drive it home even further for you if you really need me to. We do not agree. Me and him do not agree on this. Okay? I don't know if he really feels this way. And if he's just saying this stuff to relate to his audience, maybe he is. And this is me being extra charitable to him. Saying, hey, maybe this is just the way he feels. He needs to connect with his audience, but he don't really be feeling like cheating on his wife. He don't really be feeling like abandoning his family. He don't really be feeling like doing crazy stuff, right? And there's a difference between a thought and a feeling. There's a difference between, again, and the scriptures tell us, take every thought captive. Take every thought captive. A lot of you guys feel things that are out of pocket because you don't know how to regulate yourself. You don't know how to regulate your life. You don't know how to regulate yourself, right? So there's a chasm of difference between what he said and what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, if you're feeling some wild things, you need to go to therapy. You need to pray. You need to get consecrated. You need to figure out the root of the things that you're feeling. If a woman is on some... 
I feel like leaving my kids and I'm looking at flights to Hawaii and running out on my family. That ain't normal. I don't care if it's common. I don't care if he's saying that to relate. That's not okay. That And, the, and this is the vagueness and the confusion. The vagueness and the confusion is the part that's that, that's not helpful. Because we don't really know what are you saying. You're saying contradictory things. Don't follow your feelings, but it's okay to feel like leaving your spouse and running out on your kids. I, and again, I'm just giving him a that. Maybe he's being hyperbolic and he's trying to drive a home uh, a point home as a communicator. And maybe he doesn't really feel these things. He's just saying stuff. Consider partnering with us for only $5 a month so that we can stay independent with you as our boss and never, ever have to do a brand deal and make commercials like this one. Our friends at GenuCell Skincare have exciting news to celebrate in 2023. Using Manscaped during my showers after workout has given me much more confidence. And that's where mud water comes in. True Classic has got your back. All thanks to the sponsor of today's video, SayMine.com. Established titles is your opportunity to earn the title of Laird or Lady. Object credit approval rates range from 7.99% APR to 19.99% APR, included 0.50% auto pay discount. If you don't want us to make ads with brands you don't care about, Sign up for our online community for as little as $5 a month to keep us independent and ultimately answering to you as our boss. You get all sorts of benefits like daily replays of our after party streams, exclusive access to our Discord community, and early access to our podcast interviews, all starting for only $5 a month. King. You may not know I make music, but I got a new song coming out. And it's something I need you to do, but first, I want you to hear a snippet of the song. In a moment, I gotta overcompensate. I build a tabernacle. Why the world is rubbernecking? Eve one of the Adam's apple. Whoa there. Why you wanna go there? Time to shut the door, cause we letting out all the cold air. <laughs> Yo, double R back, baby. It's not for Rolls Royce. It's for Rap Bruce Law. Let's get it. Now, in order to get this song to the top of Spotify, I need your help. I need you to click the link below or go to ruslantothemoon.com and pre-save this song. What is a pre-save? It means that this song will be added to your library to remind you to listen to it the day it comes out. And it also tells Spotify's algorithm that millions of people need to hear this song. So help me promote Christian music that contextualizes the gospel and will help change lives by going to ruslantothemoon.com or clicking the link below. Why you want to go there? Living for the approval, the man will get you nowhere. Hey, you may not know I make music, but I have a brand new song that just came out. Here's a quick preview. I went from being a porn addict to sharing the gospel with a porn actress who was criticized for being low status by the same OnlyFans who treat us so lavish. I'm confused. I swear y'all thought he did doing podcasts, hot takes. He still can rap. Now, this is my first song that I've released in over a year. So I need you to go to Spotify. Apple Music, or wherever you consume music and stream too soon right now. Add it to your favorite playlist, share it with a friend. So hit the link in the description or go to ruslantothemoon.com to stream too soon now.